Hi, hello and welcome. Today I will be showing you how to make a repeating pattern in Affinity Designer like this one and many many more. This is just a process of how to set up your canvas and how to move elements around to ensure that your pattern repeats perfectly on each of the edges. So for this I'm going to Affinity Designer and we're going to create a new document and I will work on 4000 by 4000 pixels. Now make sure that the artboard is off and we also can switch off the margins because we won't be needing them. So as long as that artboard is not created there, you're good to go. Now press OK. And here is your canvas that you're going to be working with. And to begin with, I'm going to create square that is exactly the same size as our canvas. And if you're unsure, you can click on that icon there and it will show you the exact size of that shape that you just created. We don't need an outline, just make sure that it's 4000 by 4000 pixels as well. Now with this rectangle selected, you're going to press on symbols. And in the three line menu, we're going to add symbol from selection. And here's our symbol. You know that it's a symbol because when you go to layer menu, you will have like this little orange line on the edge. So now to ensure that our pattern will repeat seamlessly, we're going to add a couple more of those symbols that we just created. If you can't see your symbol here, you might want to click that toggle preview mode on top of your screen. Now there are a couple of different types of repeating patterns. The most popular ones are full drop, which means that each square is repeating like so and then down and across both ways. There's also a half drop, which means that every pattern square will then half drop like so. So you will have whatever's on the bottom corner here, you will have it there and there as well. For now, I'm just going to do a full drop, which means that I will move that symbol over here. This is our main canvas, remember that. So with this selected, I'm going to copy a couple more times just to make it all around that main square to ensure that each of the edges will repeat nicely. And because I got snapping on, which is here, that little magnet, it does a snap pretty lovely and it's easy to do like so. Now don't worry if you see any lines, if you keep zooming in, you will realize that it's just the program's way of differentiating different squares that we have made. But if you do check it, it does align pretty well with the middle section like so. Okay, I'm happy with this. Now we're going to choose our layers and we have here all of our symbols that we have created. So the bottom one should be our center one. And because we will be working on that one, I will group everything else together, move our symbol that we're working on to the top and lock the rest. Now in our symbol, we only have this rectangle, but how the symbol work is that anything you add to your existing symbol. So let's say I'll add a red circle See, it will repeat nicely on all of the other symbols that we have recreated. Any modification that you will make on that one symbol will replicate itself on the following ones. And if I decide to move it over the edge, you'll see that it also moves over the edge, not here, and I will just show you now how to fix that. Because we've created symbol with the selection of our rectangle, which was our background color, what we're going to do now is remove it. This will not remove our symbol altogether. It will just get rid of the background that we have created there to begin with. Now, if we do want to see that background again, what we can do, we can create rectangle on the very bottom of everything else that covers all of our symbols that we have added on. And if I change that to a different color, you will see that now we are seeing all of the elements. And if I move that circle over the edge, 
it will show everywhere because that background color is in the actual background. So this will give you a live preview of how your pattern will repeat. Now the next thing to do is add your elements and arrange them in the way that you want to, ensuring that they're all in your working symbol, like this ellipse over here. Background color, do something darker, let's say so. I'm going to add some elements into our symbol and I'm going to add a couple of those potion vials uh, that I've created earlier on for my stickers just to make some witchy pattern to go with it and just ensure that those elements that you enter are actually inside of your symbol you can remove that ellipse we don't need that now just ensure that that orange line over here on our working symbol is including all of the elements that you want to show on that repeating pattern which will then obviously repeat itself all over it. I'm going to add a couple of more elements. Usually when you enter them from the asset menu they won't be included automatically in your symbol so you're just going to have to add them manually like so. Now for those three I will remove the effects because we don't want any outlines and I will rearrange them. A little tip to work with the seamless pattern is to agree which edge you're going to be working with. So what does it mean? If I move this potion over here, it will repeat over this edge as well, which means that if I'm gonna try to amend it in here, I can't, those layers are locked. So this is actually this symbol over here that just repeats whatever is in my middle square like so. Therefore, if you do need to amend anything on that edge, you will have to amend this element like so to ensure that it looks correctly and the way you want. So the rule is to make sure that you align all of your items on one edge so you don't have to look for them once you start rearranging them in different ways. Because it's going to take me a while, I will see you again once I rearrange all of those elements and I like how they look. Okay, we've finished that. I've added a couple of extra elements. So we have those little bushes in the background and I've also added a few lines with the pencil and I made them much larger to be this rounded blobby shape. You can experiment with different brushes and different sizes to add a little bit of a texture into your backgrounds, like so. Or if you want, you can leave it plain, depending on what is your desired effect. Now we have our symbol that we worked with and we have other symbols all grouped uh, that are showing us how the pattern will repeat itself around it. And if we want to use it as a pattern tile for websites such as Redbubble or Spoonflower, what we can do is click the icon toggle preview mode on the top. Once you do that, you have a perfectly repeatable tile that you can export as a PNG or JPEG and you can then use in your artwork as a repeating pattern. You're gonna do export. Remember that first style that we've created was 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixels. And I'm just gonna save it in my gallery as a PNG. So save image and that's it. Now, if we go to Procreate and I will create 4,000 by 4,000 pixel canvas, I can then add that picture and it will fill the entire thing. Now, what we can do is ensure that the snapping is on and change that to 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels so it goes into the corner. Now with that, we are going to create our repeat. So we're gonna duplicate it three times and then we're gonna move up and down and to the sides to ensure that our pattern is 
repeating perfectly on each side. And as you can see, there is no seam, there's no overlapping, the pattern is repeating in full blocks around itself without any issues. Now you'd say, why would you want to use it? And there's a couple of options for that. I was playing with uh, some patterns to create my thank you cards and just to see how would they look on the backing, like so. But I think I'm gonna change them. I did create that template to have a go at a repeating fantasy map that I'm trying to put on the backing of my thank you cards instead of the circles, just to um, make it a bit more fantasy mapish related. So again, those are the elements that I've created on our symbol and it's still work in progress, so it's not finished. But if I move that mountain, let's say, it will move everywhere else and I can see how that pattern will look like when it's repeated and this is a half drop. I will show you how to make half drop pattern in the next video. In this case I want to create a simple repeating pattern of a fantasy map with some trees. I will add some forest and some other bits and bobs to make it look a bit more filled in. At the moment it looks a bit empty and then we'll see how it will look like. So I will use that pattern probably for my backing cards. Maybe I will print some packaging and you can make many other products using this repeating pattern solution and also using vectors which will allow you to change the size without pixelation. So if you decide one of the days that you do like some of the graphics that you create and for example you want to create a wallpaper out of it with massive designs that will be around 30 centimeters on your wall then you can do so using the vector graphics and resize it according to your needs right i hope you enjoyed this tutorial of the full drop repeating seamless pattern as always have a great time creating and i will see you in the next one bye